G'day, how you going? This is Ian Harris from Australia here, your acrylic guru, and today I'm going to do a misty river lake type of theme. And the photo came from a beautiful photographer who does some wicked work named Mark Schiffler. I asked him if I can use it to paint. He says, yep, knock yourself out. So I'm going to knock myself out along with you cobbers out there, all right? I'll just show you what the um, picture looks like for those who don't know. Okay, so I'm going to do my rendition of this photograph with some mountains, some mist, a bit of an island, some trees, a guy in a kayak, and some reflections in the water, okay? And I'm going to do it the way I blend in acrylics, all right? All right, I use phalo blue with a reddish tinge, black, Van Dyke Brown, Yellow Oxide, Magenta, Primary Blue, Titanium White, Yellow Green, and Forest Green, and some Clear Medium Retarder. All right, I've shown you the reference picture. I'm getting my canvas. The size of the canvas is right there now. You can see the size of the canvas in centimetres. And I've just sprayed it with some water. I want to get my two inch brush with some white flowing paint and Retarder in there because I want to get this all blended okay so we'll start off with the sky first okay I've put masking tape where I want the bottom of the mountains to be so I'm gonna get this sky and the area for the sky blended so I want to get that on there like so Okay, I'm getting my phalo blue reddish tinge. It's, it's called phalo blue reddish. It has a reddish tinge in there. And I just want to um, get the sky. So I'm just going to crisscross that in for the sky. It's a bit of a different tinge to the normal phalo blue, okay? And of course, I'll grab my blending brush and I'll quickly blend this blue so it's not all brush stroked. It's nice and it just looks nice and soft and as I go I'll, I'll wipe the brush on my paper towel there all right so it's pretty easy we might put a bit of the, in the in the photo there's no cloud so what I might do is put my own bit of cloud in there just to break the sky up a bit you know so we're blending this I'll get some white paint on my fan brush and I'll put a couple of clouds in there. All right, we'll put some simple clouds in the sky, just somewhere down. So create the edge of your cloud like so. Grab your blending brush and just blend them so they look like a beautiful cloud. Tickle the tops a little bit, but mainly blend the bottom out. Just like that. That looks like a cloud floating in the sky. It's not necessarily going down to the atmosphere. We'll do another one on the other side. So I'll wipe that brush, get all the contaminated paint off it, and do the other side. So we'll probably put one about here as well, maybe. There's something like that. That'll do me. Grab my blending brush and do the same to that. Blend it down. <sighs> Just so she looks like a beautiful soft cloud sitting in your sky. There we go. I'm happy with that. That'll do. That's a simple sky for our couple of mountains. <laughs> The bottom of my mountains are going to come to the top of this tape so I'm just using my flathead brush and I'll use this to get the black on there so we'll probably create a ridge there so it, it doesn't have to be exact to the photo I'm, I'm using that as a reference so I'm going to get all the black in there the way I want it so we'll get one in here block him in And we'll get another one on the other side, which is virtually coming up here. And he's coming there like that. 
pretty simple I'll get my head out the way so you can see what's happening over here just there like that now if you've got a a desired mountain design that you like just use that it doesn't have to be these exact shapes like the picture is that's all it is it's just a reference so we'll get all this blocked in I'll wet that a bit so it'll flow across the canvas better there we go so we've got all that blocked in okay I'm using that same flathead brush I've mixed some white with the black just to give myself some shadow here so I want to come down the mountain and see the mountains need these zigzags in them to give them a bit of realism just like that and the same on this one here bring it down work out where you want that zigzag and then we can start shadowing it in can you see that I'll get it a bit more distinctive because that paints a bit wet and then we'll pull this down start again get these tones down in your ridge there from your mountain just like so and some on the other one just to indicate we've got light coming from one side I suppose just like that I'm going to wipe the brush and we'll scratch that down a bit that'll do same over here bring it over there and that can go like that just like so and down here on the palette I've got me Van Dyke Brown and I want to get just a little bit of white in it not too much just to give it the color I'm looking for that'll do now I'm getting that Van Dyke Brown on my flat chisel brush I want to come across the top here and I'm going to make those ridges into the the dark bit there following the lay of the land okay just like that all right I've dried all this black now I'm going to just push that down that way dry in, in the shape of the the hill that it is get it nice and tight against there and then we can start breaking that up with the black just like that that's one side now we'll do the other side as well so get that nice top bit nice and sharp and then bring it down get that jigsaw zigzag look there following the lay of the land and that'll come that way and that'll fade into a dark corner there All right, same brush, different colour. I've got some yellow oxide. I want to sort of break that into it in a roundabout way, just like that. I want to grab another brush and then pull that up before she dries, just like that, just so it's sort of blending it in a bit. Same on this side. Get some bits of yellow oxide in there and then scratch it up into it just like that get a bit more on here it went a bit pale there see but I'm following the shape of the mountain as well I've added some white with the yellow oxide now and I just want to sort of wash that together a little bit not too much just a little bit and then we'll put some grass on there see that that can do it for a bit more yellow that's it it's gonna have some grass on it just like that okay now we'll put some grass on there now I've got the forest green on my flat brush and I want to start bringing some green up into this mountain here but just sort of fading off see these mountains in the photo don't have the grass on there but I think I want it on there it's just what I want we'll get over that dark bit there so this is forest green and we're going to do virtually the same to the other one as well and then we'll get some yellow green over this 
don't block it all the way in leave some open gaps don't kill all the dark bits on that dark side there you want it merging into those colors at a roundabout way so it's sort of this looks like distant rock inside the hill will sort of come over here that's nice grassy dunes and then we'll start bringing this grass up in the forest green as well on this side so starting from the black coming up and then I'm sort of fair and stepping back with it and it just makes for some sort of mountainside scenery ground cover it's pretty similar to the Bob Ross special mountain ridge lake mountain that I did so we'll get that up there to about there all right now I'm drying every coat that I do when I did the yellow oxide and the Van Dyke brown I'm drying it to before I put the next one on otherwise everything's gonna mud up and you'll be having trouble why isn't it working out the way it did for Ian so I've dried that forest green that I've put on now now I'm getting the yellow green and I'm going to do the same but I don't want to overdo this this is if anything highlighting it and if you find your brush is doing too many distinctive brush blobby marks change it so you have got to be very careful with this brush coming in there a lot of this or the bottom of this is will be covered with the mist and that's just giving it some field grass up there so the forest green acted as the depth and shadow for this actual yellow green without that forest green under there it wouldn't make it pop because you're using lights and darks that will come over here keeping the top sharp that's the horizon of the mountain see so I don't want to break up all them darks I'm going to in a roundabout artistic way just scatter them through so they're not blocking everything and covering everything up we'll bring this back over here just like so now that's done all we need to do now is highlight some of this green that we just put on the yellow green with the touch of, touch of white you don't want to be an idiot and highlight all of that there's the hill we want to highlight it over there and fading back towards us in my view so we're going to highlight the very ridge of it let it be broken up and sort of come forward and fade away this will distinguish different lays in the grass as well all right I'll fix that up it's getting a bit brushy there but that's the horizon sort of come down the middle guts there that's just on this shape of the mountain that I'm done for this one maybe bits up in there all right we'll pull the tape off there now that's one section of this painting done now I'm going to pretend that we're starting again I'm gonna do my white uh, retarder and blend so be that mist will be like a cloud coming up but now I want to dry that first <laughs> say hello to Lily Torva from Sweden um, she rang me last night she's going to buy one of my paintings hello to you Lily Torva and also I saw a fine artist on Facebook going live doing a painting and that was Kelly Malloy from um, where was he from from Florida so I want to say hello to you Kelly Malloy Kelly Malloy keep up the good work and there was also some people from the previous competition that didn't get a call out and those people are there's there's Peter Hoffman, g'day Peter Hoffman, Joan Renner we didn't get to, hello Joan Renner, 
There's Lynn Seymour. Hello, Lynn Seymour. Brandy Taylor. And JC Barbie. We'll get to some more later on if we can. Now, I've dried all this. See? It's looking okay. It's, it's, it's not the same as the, the photo, but that's our reference, don't forget. Try not to get the mistake of falling into that trap and going, oh, I'm trying to copy it to a T and you get tripped up and things go wrong. I'm just doing, oh, it's got mountains there, it's got mist there and it's got water there, so I'm doing my sky, my mountains, my mist and my water, but using that as a reference because it's a bloody good reference, I reckon, that photo. Got to thank Mark Schiffler for that once again. Anyway, now, this is dry. I want to mask up the top area where... that mountain is so we don't bugger it up all right so we'll get that there just like so okay I've covered that top area up so when I'm spraying I don't get water drops drying into the paint okay so now we're starting the way I normally start a canvas we're going to spray this with water I'm grabbing my two inch with my flowing white paint and the medium clear retarder in it and we're going to put all the bottom blendings in okay so let's Blend that. We'll get all this on there like that. Crisscross it on. Get him up there like that. And why I wet the canvas, it allows the paint to flow and fall into those little potholes you have in canvases. Because some people, you might notice little bubbles of white start popping through your coloured paint or your black because their potholes are not full of paint. I mean, that water doesn't eliminate it, but it just helps it. Now, we've got that on there, right? And our reference picture, see this is where we've taped up from here up. Now our reference picture, I'm going to blend all this like a cloud and a sky, but instead of having, we're going to have these colours instead of sky cloud colours, okay? And then we'll paint this over it. It's going to be that easy. So we're getting our phalo blue and we're pretty much starting from here. This is that phalo blue reddish. Coming from there, I've put it on, my brush is full of paint, so what am I going to do? I'm just going to wipe it off like that, get this fan brush and get it up there in a roundabout way just so I've got less m smashing on me blending brush. That's it. Now I'll get my blending brush and I'm going to blend that up. I'll like actually blend both sides just to make it easier. But see, I want to blend it, wipe my brush, the build up. See, I'll, 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 I'll probably put too much on there, but we'll get by that. Blend that in a roundabout way. Come in closer. Now, we'll blend this down into the... Well, no, we'll blend that up into that white there, just like that. Wipe your brush as you go, because see, it's building up paint, and you don't want to be turning your blending into mud. So we're going from blue into virtual white. Yeah, I've got to remember to talk loud when I get the camera close to my throat. I've got a habit of start talking soft. People are saying your volume's a bit low. All right, we're getting there, getting there, getting there, playing with it, playing with it, and playing with it. That's what art's all about, playing with it, eh? Get a look at that. Play with it, you get something happening. That's happening. It might be a bit darker than the actual photo, but it doesn't matter because this is our painting. It's not that photo, it's our painting. That photo gave us reference for this painting. Now we'll bring this down into the here, into this bottom half as well, because we've got to try and get the reflection of the sky in the water as well, okay? So we're bringing this down, blending. See what all that white with the retarder is allowed to happen? It's just blending like an oil. So we've got all that there. Now I'm going to bring some of that over the blue so it's not so harsh. All right, well quickly, I could see where my mountain is there under the tape. So we want to get that pretty much roughly in the water like that. Something like that. Get a bit of um, that going and that going. Just the colours that are in it. Just wipe the brush, don't have to be too... Get a bit of the grey on that side, a bit on that side. Wash and wipe your brush. Grab some of the green. 
and there's obviously some green there and some green there just basic like this wipe that get some of the yellow green all these colors just dab it like that all right see how easy that was then we'll we'll pull it down in a kind of way just like this not too much because I want to go mainly sideways with it but we've just got the actual mountain in the water uh, the colors of the mountain in the water okay that'll do it all right I'm getting some of that phalo blue again on my fan brush with some white in it just so it's a bit lighter and we want to put the we'll come back in here where the sky is and just cross that in through those mountain reflections over here get them back in just like so down there as well all right now I'll grab that brush and I'll carefully I'll probably get a bit of white scooting through that as well to make up for the clouds what's up there just something like that now we want to grab our brush again and where can we go we'll probably come this way just to blend that like so just do one sweep that's plenty enough I'll do another one now here we're going to come back and redo this now I've got the white paint I'll go to the the tape I'll just do a bit at a time and then blend that back down into the blue because that blue is not blended that heavy into the white so we're going to tone it down just like so wipe your brush and then keep blending some more if I do it all the way along it's going to start getting chalky and dry because the paint's starting to dry but I want it to have that wet oily look like it's been done with oil there see right so we've done that far we'll, we'll do here get it to there just put a bit on because if it's dry really dry you wouldn't be able to achieve this so we want to push that back down into the blue wipe your brush so we want a beautiful soft transition oh that's it beautiful that's what I'm after soft transition and a bit more over here where are we somewhere here and then we can have the fun of taking the tape off watch this we'll blend that blend him a bit see how see how that's putting big heavy bits there that's where you stop wipe your brush and she comes powdery soft again makes you want to go oh all right I'm getting happy now because I want to take that tape off <coughs> and we'll start seeing our painting come to life hopefully we don't rip that paint off wouldn't it be a disaster if that happened eh? you need to kill the sticky off tape sometimes by rubbing it on cotton or on some material get off there you dog all right now what we got to do we want to bring the mist just above here now like it is in the reference picture let's have a look see how the mist is hovering under the mountain now that's what we want to achieve along here before I dry this I want to bleed this white up in there like that so it's not a harsh line okay just along there like that I'm using the really good quality white and we're pushing that up into the mountains there just like so just so we're getting rid of that harsh line that the tape the masking tape made now if this mountain was not dry that'll be scratching it into mud and all sorts of nonsense and you don't want that okay so we'll try and get rid of that harsh tape line my little blending brush now all that white I pushed up I'm creating the top of the mist so we'll come down and up and create that top value of mist 
hovering over the mountains there or just under the mountains okay and you don't need this brush I didn't put nothing on this brush that I'm blending with nothing went on it it's got its own pick up from the paint to move it across the canvas the way it is like this okay and you can see what it's doing it's looking like mist well we hope it's looking like mist see when they're like that really hard you can wipe that brush dry oh look at that hey turns it soft into powder okay we've done that but look we can see the tape line still so I'm getting my thick paint still and I've got this to the shape I want now I'm going to camouflage that with this paint a bit more just where the solid white is and try and camouflage it a bit better than what it is okay so I'm getting it really thick and smashing it on over that tape line just to hide it some more now some of the blue water here so it doesn't look a bit odd with the reflection we've got of the mountain there we need to get rid of this straight line here so we're going to sort of get this color and jigsaw it I call it jigsawing to where you backwards and forwards but in a long way and just changing that there beautiful brush to do this with these flat chisel headed things I like them also this where the mountains in the water I'm bringing some of the water zigzaggy through the reflection as well just the way it is in the picture but now we're going to put the other layer of mist in here okay now I've waxed some tape down here for the bottom half of the mist so I'm going to get my fan brush which is long and directional and pretty much put it on there like so give it a little bit of water to flow if it's not moving across your canvas the way you would like it just like that in a roundabout way blend that into that blue a bit softer yeah just like that can you see there am I not in the way just like that tease it up so it looks a bit more realistic over here as well it's very dry and glummy so still got a bit of movement but it's not wet the way I normally blend but this is alright I want it to just tickle up into that now we'll take this tape off it's a bit damp but I want to sort of get the bottom of that and just lightly tease it so we haven't got that tape mark and we've got it's a straight line but it's a bit of a blurry broken line see what that's doing for the kayaks tail which is about here so his kayaks leaving a bit of a, a trail in the water just something like that some ripples into a point now I've put some tape in the middle of the lower band of mist I'm grabbing the Van Dyke brown mixed with the white and we're going to put in that island there just so as I get a nice straight edge on the island at least something there like that <laughs> Now we'll put some trees on here. I've just got some black and some forest green mixed together so it's a really dark, dark green. And I'm using a fan brush. I'm going to do just some different trees. So I'll get the actual layout of where I want them first and then I'll put some detail in them. Just like that. Wet your brush up again. I'm just coming like a big fan. Fanning out. Some can come right up there. This will be just the shadow on the island of the trees. I don't know what these trees are. Most, most artists say it's a such and such a tree and all that. I don't know. Right, we'll get some sort of resemblance of that just under this here. Sort of there-ish. Not too much. Careful. There's something like that. 
hopefully that's wet enough we can pull down just I'll have to wet it a bit so as I can pull it down into the water let's get a bit over here it looks a bit short there doesn't it Let's get that pulled down. Yeah, a bit of water helps. Look at that. Now down here I'm using the colours for the trees. I've got the magenta, the yellow oxide, the forest green and the yellow green here. We'll use those to colour it up. So we'll, yeah, I'm gonna, I suppose I'll put the darker ones on first. A couple of, this one you won't see as much, but where you're having it go beyond the black, just like that, see? looking around the we've got some up here have it broken into the white there that, that's it get some green in there put some oh there's already some in the reflection that's not too bad now wipe that brush and wash it and we'll get some of the other colors in there what do we got we've got some of that magenta so let's get some of that with a little bit of white just to give it a cherry blossom color okay and then we'll sort of spot some of that in there as well oh yeah get some of that in the water don't forget oh we'll do that later so we can quickly blend it down get some in there some up there i'll get a bit more white on that it looks a bit too red here we go this will be better yeah make it a bit more open on your brush Steve, get out of that sink, boy. Okay, and we'll put this back in there. Some of the cherry blossom colours. We'll wash. Now we'll get that in there. Some of that there, 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 there. We'll quickly pull that down, eh? Just so it looks real. Oh, I'm going to pull it pretty much straight away. Right, that looks all right. Uh. Yep. Now we're getting the yellow oxide with a tad of white in it. Don't kill all your greens that you put back there either. Get this in between where you want it. I don't know. Got a little, little, little ones down there as well, like that. And now we'll just double them up in the water. That'll do it. Get the brush. Pull it down. I'm pushing on it with the tips of my fingers because it's pretty dry, that acrylic. All right, now my last colour is the yellow green. So we'll just sort of highlight some of those green backgrounds with it. And then we'll put some in the front here. Just like that. Just some yellow green colour. And we'll put a bit in the water as well. And then quickly pull that down before we lose before we lose it all right now we'll just fix up the front of the island all right i've got the van dyke brown on the knife and i want to sort of i painted the island in there but i've lost some of it so we're going to sort of whoa car what's going on there we're going to sort of bring it back over those plants there i hate knives load that up again bloody knives I hate them and try and get our island looking a bit like an island and what I might do is get some white on my knife okay now all I have to do is put the little man in the kayak in there so the best way to do the kayak is we'll prime it in in the white paint and then we can lay the colors over it otherwise if you just use the raw color over this they'll look see-throughish and you don't want them to look see-throughish oh no <laughs> anyway let's get that kayak on and then we can sign and frame it
Now we'll just get the black in, which will create his little seating pouch somewhere here. And he's got some ropes at the front, I think. Yeah, he's got some ropes crossing the front of it like so. Look at these little flathead brushes, they're great, aren't they? Like little knives. And that black comes to a point roughly here. So that's the capsule he sits in. Something like that. I'll straighten it up. It looks like a dog's hind leg. There we go. It doesn't take much to put a bit of pride in your work, does it, eh? All right, now the the back of him is pretty much yellow oxide by the looks of it. So we'll sort of put some sort of hint of that in there. All right, we'll whack a frame on that, but before I do, I'll just give it my signature. Okay. There we go, that's not too shabby. All right, I hope you like that exercise. A bit of a man in a kayak over the river and some mountains and some mist. Beautiful subject. Thanks, Mark Schiffler, for the photo. Hope you like what I did. Tell a friend if you like it, but if you don't like it, you tell everybody, okay? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.